all right everybody welcome to your third c++ tutorial in which we'll be discussing about something called variables in c++ now variables are pretty much like container holders for values of different kinds now if you have ever been into javascript then there's no distinguishing between different kind of data variables because in javascript you could um, change the value even the data type of that particular value on the runtime itself but in C++ to define a variable we need two things already defined by the programmer that is the data type and the other thing is the name now these two things are very important in C++ now data type is nothing but what the variable would store actually the type of value the variable would store so for example you are let's say getting the ages input of a lot of people then what you want from them is a natural number obviously but let's say if you are getting a test marks from the students of your class then you would like to have decimal support as well for the children getting 0.5 or in the multiples of 0.5 marks so you see that we have different types of data types right here now I'll begin with the simplest one that is the integer now integer from your maths class is something like this white and it's in the computers also it's still the same the only difference in the computer world is that this thing has a limit and this thing has a limit too because in theory in mathematics we could talk about infinities but in computer science no because we need infinite memory to store infinite integers so everything has a physical limit in computer science so anyways getting back to the topic an integer variable is defined by the keyword int which defines its data type and you must have already noticed by now that why the heck we are using this int right here as well now I, I'll tell you the reason behind that in a couple of tutorials but you have to wait till then so to create an integer value a variable type int and type my first variable and that's pretty much it and yeah remember every always to end every statement in C++ with a semicolon that's how the compiler knows that the statement has ended and it begins with the next statement in a different way so if you leave that without a semicolon then you will get a compilation error so you see that it shows me error expected initializer before C out so it simply means that there was continuation of the statement and the statement was not terminated so anyways now we have this my first variable defined as integer but what does it store right now we don't know it is just a simple variable assigned by the CPU to you now you could use this variable to assign your own value and let's say I define it as 10 now if I use C out my first variable and compile build and run the program you see I get the output as 10 now it must be pretty um, useless for you right now because you are most probably thinking that why not just do like this but variables are actually very important very very important in a program because their values could be modified so if I do like my first variable 10 right here and my first variable is equal to 100 here and I see out the statement again then what would happen is I get 10 as the first print and 100 as the next print now the reason they appear on the same line is that C++ doesn't know I want to 
print this one on a new line and we have something special for that to happen but let me just talk about only data types in this tutorial now the next data type we have in C++ is the float now the float what it would do is it would give you access to store decimals as well in C++ now by default let's say I store 10.12 here and 100.34 here now let's see what happens when I compile or build and run the program so you see that even though I stored 10.12 in the first variable the output was 10 and even though I stored 100.34 the output was 100 now the reason is that in C++ when you define a variable with integer data type then it has to be integer it cannot be something else if it is something else then the compiler would automatically try to typecast that into the data type it was previously assigned now to fix this error or not an error technically to make sure that we get 0.12 as output with 10 what we can do is change the data type of int my first variable to float now float literally means a decimal and yep I just forgot to tell you about the comments so comments just begin with double slash and these won't have any effect on the output so float just means a number like with some decimals and obviously these decimals also have a limit you cannot have like 200 or 300 decimals so these have also a limit so let's build and run the program now so you see that we get 10.12 as the output now and 100.34 as the output now now you might be thinking that why not use float every time instead of integers now there's a well uh, you can say established reason for that as well suppose you want to do some arithmetic which I would be discussing in the next tutorial but let's do it right now suppose you want to do some arithmetic like 10 by 3 uh, let's change it to int now we all know that 10 by 3 is 3.33333333 till the end of the universe but we don't have that much space and moreover this is a kind of integer so it won't store all this thing so what would be the output as is just 3 now this is this number is not rounded off don't think that this number is not at all rounded off because in C++ integer won't round off the number it would just take off the integral part of that so if I do like 10 by 4 then the result should be 2.5 now this number if rounded off would be to 3 because by convention we round off 0 0.5 to the next greatest integer but I'll just show you that it never rounds off to the greatest or the least integer so you see that we get 2 only now that's why sometimes we use integer when we are not really interested in the decimal part at all anyways now we have float we have integers and we have character arrays as well now characters are used pretty much to store a single character so if I say character Q is M and I see out Q then you'll see that we get M as output now one problem with C and C++ we have is that there's nothing such as a string data type though we have that in a header file known as string.h string more precisely not dot h because we don't include dot h in C++ modern compilers so using this we could get access to string but there's no native string data type in computers so what we used to do is to create a character 
array of characters now array is a complete different story and we would be talking about arrays um, after some tutorials but I'm just telling you guys that to store strings in C++ we need to have a collection of alphabets which pretty much serves the purpose of that so that was a quick introduction for you guys to different data types and how to work with them in the next tutorial we'll be probably looking at the arithmetic operations on numbers and decimal points in C++ so that's it for this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching I'll see you then